Following on from our modular frame all-in-one factory, today we're going to be doing another one. This time, an encased industrial beam all-in-one factory, which you may have noticed we've used in our Let's Play series, producing 11.5 encased industrial beams per minute. And for this build, you're going to need 172.5 limestone per minute, as well as 120 iron ore. It's actually about 0.4 more than that, but I think we can round down for this particular build. And same with the coal as well, 120. You'll also need three power shards and the encased industrial pipe alternate recipe. So let's start off with the first floor. For this, we're going to do, use the one meter foundations as we normally do. And then from here, I'm going to house this all in. We want to make sure that we have a three conveyor wall here and one this side as well, which is where our output of resources will be. We're also going to have our entrance in the bottom right hand corner. We're now ready to place our foundries. So the first one we're going to place here so that the output is in the center of this foundation. And then we're going to place two more alongside this. We also want to make sure that we have our output for our encased industrial beams here. So we're going to run these all the way along to this point. Next, you want to sort out your inputs. So we're going to grab our splitters and these will be taking 120 iron ore per minute through this line. So make sure you do have a mark to belt. Above this, we're going to be running the coal into these and we're going to do this via a another line of coal from here feeding directly into this splitter and then running a manifold across the top like so at this point you're going to want to underclock one of these we're going to go with the normal steel ingot recipe and we're going to underclock it to 68.3 which is just over 30 steel ingots per minute. And the other two will be set to the normal 100% clock speed, 45 per minute steel ingots. At this point, we have our inputs and our outputs sorted with the exception of the limestone, which we'll do shortly, and the steel ingots. These steel ingots are going to run up to the end here and then across to this position where it will go up to the next floor. Speaking of the next floor, to get up there, we're going to place down a catwalk just in the back foundation here, up two full walls using the catwalk stairs. And then from here, we're going to run this across the wall. On top of the corner, we're going to place our catwalk crossing. And then we're going to run a further three more of these catwalk T crossings, which will then go up to the next floor. We also want to make sure that we have our limestone coming up to this floor and our steel as well. At this point, we are ready to move on to the second floor. To get the right height, you're going to want to make sure that the second floor starts at the top of the third wall, as you can see just here. We're going to box this up now, and once we've done that, we'll continue on with the build. This next floor is going to be quite tight. We're going to start off with the constructors. We want to place them so that they are in the center of this column, and you'll know that you've got the right position if you can place a merger so that it's not over the edge in the center here. And you also want to place a splitter so that it's against the wall. Do note that because we have over 120 limestone on this line, you are going to want to use a Mark III belt. At this point, we're going to set up the manifold. These are going to be set to concrete with the third one being set to 183.3 clock speed so that you're producing a total of 27.5 concrete per minute. Then have the mergers all going down the line. And for the output belt for the concrete, you should be fine with a Mark I belt because it's just under 60 per minute that we'll be producing. Next, we're going to do the same in the exact same positions across the right hand column, but we're going to place four constructors this time. Each one of these is going to be set to steel pipes and we're going to run these all the way down 
In fact, what we can do, rather than have it out this way, is to have the merger facing the left of the grid. It's going to be slightly over the stairwell, but it shouldn't affect us. And of course, we are going to want to make sure that we are splitting the resources from that input line down along to all of the constructors. We do have, I believe, just over 120. Yeah, it's the same. So we're going to want to use a Mark II belt, same as the floor below for the resources. And we've got this one constructor here. It sounds silly, but we're going to have to overclock this by 0.25%. We just need to use that extra 0.5% steel pipes per minute and at this point we're going to take these resources up to the next floor so we have this one here and we also have this one as well i try to keep them pretty close together this one actually needs to be facing that direction and from here we can do the walkway up to the next floor you don't have to follow me if you want i just find that this is the easiest way to do it though it does require clipping which i know a lot of you dislike but apologies, uh, there's a limit to what we can do here due to the space. So I'm going to bring this across here. We're going to place these here and have a corner strip here. We'll do the opposite that side. So you can see how we've opened this section up and brought it along so that we can run, as you can see over here. Oh, I've done it slightly differently. I take it back. What we've done there is similar, but rather than taking both across, we just take the one walkway out there, ready for the next floor. I'm going to show you the logistics now on this build. Uh, I just need to load it up, but it's going to give you a better idea as to how I've done the power logistics for both floors. This particular build is very tight. It's probably the tightest build that we've done. I'll run through the build afterwards so you can see how it's turned out. Uh, obviously, I'm not showing you how I've done the decoration because that's open to interpretation. But with this, you can see we have the pillars through the corner section, which are housing all of the power, holding the joints for the power. And then we also have the walkway going up to the next floor, which will be in this section here. As for the resources, we have brought these around. You can do this with ceiling mounts if you want, or you can place down a fake foundry uh, foundation floor and then build these. But these are going to be brought up to the next floor and obviously make sure it's pointing in the right direction. So we're going to load the next floor now and you'll see what we've done with the assemblers and the loading of the resources. And here we are with the top floor. Now we are going to break this down in a moment, but before we do, I do just want to mention that if you are enjoying the music, do check out the link to our Spotify page below. It's music that we've co-produced and I'm really proud of it. And it's also copyright free. So if you're a content creator, you can use it in your streams and your videos for free without any worry uh, for copyright strikes. But let's move on and break down what this is. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that the walkway is actually going to be lower at this point than the floor that we have. And it's important to have two spaces here in this right-hand corner because otherwise it's going to be too lower floor for you to walk along. Um, as you can see here, it's very tight. Uh, one thing that I actually totally forgot to mention is that in this section here, uh, we are going to need a little conveyor floor hole. Uh, this is going to go up to the next floor as well and down to the bottom, if you remember, we placed the conveyor for the output. So now that we have done this, we have our two elevators in the spots where the, the resources are going to come up and then we have our output line just in the center. The next thing that we're going to need to do is to place ourselves three assemblers. We're going to place one here. You can see how it's just on the edge in this section. Uh, just over the middle and then either side of that we're also going to place a another and the idea is that we're going to place our merger and bring the resources like so to the end where the resources will go down 
to the output. In the right hand section here, we're going to run this around. And what I've done in my build is to actually run a bit of a floor for viewing everything that's going on. You don't have to do this. I just thought it would be something nice to have an observation point for the assemblers. But I've done it essentially like that. And now we're going to do our inputs for these three assemblers. These aren't in the right space necessarily because we're going to need one that is lower and then one that is running above. And so we place these three high and we can delete the ones underneath. We'll run these as a manifold into the assemblers like so. At this point, you've done the logistics. We just need to connect the power up, but we do need to set the recipes. These are going to be the alternate steel pipe, the industrial pipe recipe. And we're going to want to underclock this one to 87.5. Yes, because that's 3.5 and the rest can run at 100% clock speed. And there you go. This is without all of the bells and whistles. I'll show you my one now. This is actually the build complete. We haven't got a roof simply because it's the max height of the blueprint designer. So if you want a roof, you're gonna to have to build it yourself. But if we jump down here, this seems to be a little bit of a bug. They are connected, but here we go. You have the observation floor and we can walk down through here. It's quite tight, but you can see how the power is nicely tucked underneath. And then we have the resources heading down along to the bottom where they then head out to the output here. As for the decoration of the build itself, I've kept the sections open where the constructors are clipping through the wall, which is why we have these open slots. I kind of like it, although it does remind me of, I don't know, is that a stormtrooper like helmet? <laughs> it kind of looks like one. I actually, yeah. Kind of does. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Anyway, uh, this blueprint is available on our uh, Patreon page if you do not want to go through the labor of building all of this yourself following our example. Uh, but we are going to leave it there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful. And as always, special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our Solar Clips Patreons, James Irwin, Fireflesh, and Trebor, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity Ben Star, Shoku the Yemen Wolf, and that Dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Dashlom. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.